Good day, mate. 40 here. Looking back to Manly. Getting ready to take the Manly Ferry over to Circular Quay and Sydney Opera House. Just watching, listening, reading Substack here by Richard Hananya. Man needs sex and violence, not top down meaning. Elites are miserable, normies are fine. In the 1990s, are a respite from intellectuals. Yeah, pretty good uh, Substack post here from Richard Hananya. So, as an example of intellectual hysteria, this is Athenian Stranger talking to Alex Gashuta. Not to get too nerdy about it, but that's, but that's the point is that yeah. this, this goes back a long way. Uh, there, there, have been, there have been a number of separate foundings of America. There wasn't just one set of founders. There was the initial founding, then there were refoundings. You know, certainly. Wow, so just as individuals, we make up you know, our lives constantly, we make over our lives constantly, like today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Right? So too with countries and communities and religions, who would have thought? Civil War was a refounding. Certainly LBJ with his new society was a refounding. Certainly FDR with his new deal was a refounding. And I get into sort of, I've had to learn from some of my friends about this. I, I, I was very emphatic that Obama was another founding, basically a fourth founding of the country. But some of the some of my friends made a very persuasive case that was really George W. Bush, I think. And it turns out he wasn't the nice guy that everyone thinks he was. Uh, and I think there's a lot of truth to that because uh, he did some really insane things. But I, I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like yeah, just uh, unnecessary invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan, costing us seven trillion dollars and costing Iraqis hundreds of thousands of lives. But aside from that, real nice guy. Sort of like the, you know, which person do you dislike more, Bush or? Obama, it's really hard to say. I guess you sort of have to take the two of them together because they destroyed the country. They destroyed the country so thoroughly uh, to the point where we're sort of living in Barack Obama's fourth term. Uh, but, you know, now I'm sort of rambling. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's all good. It's expected on, on the podcast. Um, I, they do seem now just obviously... Yeah, can these long-form alt-right podcasts really save civilization? Obviously, in hindsight, to be very much creatures of the same era. They're almost... Maybe it's, you know, the history becoming a bit blurry <laughs> in hindsight, but it's just, they, they've, they seem like, you know, they could be best buddies looking back from, from our vantage point at the moment. Um, and, you know, I think, I think the point you make is, is extremely good about the, the, the founding. And essentially the, the founding is, a, is just the, the um, solidification of um, ideas that disappear uh, and are taken as, um, as common knowledge or as, as common sense once they are absorbed into into the body politic and into into people's minds and i feel like that's you know i think um at extra net jcb uh credit for, the, for this it's uh you know politics is uh is just religion that people actually believe in and it is i mean that's that's yeah every, guess what everyone has a hero system and there may well be political elements to their hero system and uh, religious elements and cultural elements and psychological elements and status elements and elements from the economy, right? We all have a hero system. And uh, we're not even usually sure where we got it from. We don't even see it, we just take it for granted. But you know, you've got a hero system whenever you hold something to be sacred, all right? Whenever you can't laugh about something, all right? So I get upset when it comes to, um, you know, high rates of crime, uh, the, the devastation and terrorism wrought by Black Lives Matter. I, you know, I'm a, I, I regard human life as sacred, and uh, I lose my objectivity and my coolness, right, when, when it comes to you know, massive increases in violence they're brought about by activist groups and the cooperation of our elites, whether they're in government or in media, academia, NGOs, right? We, we, we trashed our police forces. We incentivized our police forces to stop enforcing the law. And as a result, we got a massive increase in driver deaths, pedestrian deaths, massive increase in crimes of violence, murder, you know, all sorts of higher crime rates resulting in the deaths of thousands of extra Americans, right? That I don't uh, treat lightly. I'm unable to see the humor in that, right? Since, uh, the summer of George Floyd, we've had you know, massively increasing crime rates and uh, don't really see the humor. So that, uh, 
That uh, massive increase in crime, all right, that, that violates my hero system. That's the, the caliber of these ideas, you know, assumptions about equality, assumptions about, um, you know, race relations, female and male. I mean, the very fundamental day-to-day -day things have been completely upended, um, where ideas that your grandmother held were essentially tied to Hitler now, you know. Yeah, and uh, what, well, people are incapable of deciding these things for themselves. Right? People don't have agency, people just evolve to be gullible. You just really want to promote the zombie bite theory of information that if you know some crazy blue haired left wing woke activist public school teacher tells your kids something that they'll just automatically believe it and act it out over the rest of their lives and if they watch Netflix then Netflix will start programming their brain and uh, your, your kid just has you know, no alternative but to accept what uh, Netflix says or those powerful cutting edge Netflix ideas are just going to really just going to take over his brain, so he's then helpless. Well, just saying that, it's just like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a crime stop, wrong thing, Hitler, your grandma was Hitler, don't think about it, everything that, you know, started from this, you know, from the new founding onwards, that's the only thing that matters, and um, it's, you know, the, the, the Yeah, and people can't do anything about that, right? they, have, they have no choice, they're just gullible, they're just going to, you know, buy any old nonsense, that uh, someone in power tells them. If uh, you know, someone waves a dollar in their face, or someone in authority, someone in elite status instructs them, or if there's a message imbued in a TV show or a movie, then uh, they can't help but to obey that message, really. That's, that's not how I see humanity. The profound uh, adoption of all this stuff is, is quite shocking, and I don't think it would have happened without, without the wonderful world of media. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that's, I mean there's, there's no doubt about that. Oh, oh that, is, that is this, uh, this brilliant uh, fellow, Athenian stranger, right? Reactionary classicism here on Alex Kishuta's podcast. He says, oh yeah, for sure, there's absolutely no doubt about what you're just saying. Right? There's just absolutely no doubt that the zombie bite theory of information is true. Let's go! That's a pretty healthy lifestyle. All those people in the canoes, they look like they're over 50. And they're out canoeing the Manly Beach. That'll keep you fit. Uh, one thing I would just sort of add uh, briefly there is that, um, you know, politics being religion that, that people actually believe. Um, I think there's even more that can be said about that because that's a, that's a good statement of where things are. Uh, we presently live in an age of nihilism. I mean, we just simply do. Most people, uh, to the extent that they'll even say that they believe in, you know, religion or God, you ask them things like, "Well, you know, do you go to church?" and they'll almost always say no, and they've sort of made it their own religion. Yeah, whether or not people go to church, they have a hero system. Right? Whether or not people consider themselves religious, they have a hero system. And whether or not people read the Bible, they have a hero system. Whether or not people read the New York Times, they have a hero system. A hero system is a biological necessity. It's some transcendent source of meaning. It's, we usually take it unthinkingly from our community. And unless we're one of those exceptional characters who's you know, creating exceptional art that we you know, may have reason to believe will last you know, down through eternity, we get our sense of eternity, we get our sense of transcendence right, from being part of a community that we believe is going to outlast us, is going to go down in history and is awesome and uh, has, plays a special role in the universe, right? That's where we get our ability to stave off insignificance through subscribing to a hero system. And so I'm in Australia, we have an Australian hero system and we have Australia Day coming up on January 26th. Right, we're going to celebrate Australia, mate. Religion, right? They say things, at least in America, you'll have Christians saying, well, you know, I don't need a church to mediate between me and God. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm just anything and everything to sort of change the meaning of what religion is uh, because... All right, we've got the first secular societies in history in Europe. Right, Protestant societies tend to secularize quicker because Protestantism is a religion of the heart, of faith, and uh, that's easier to go away than the more total religions of Catholicism and, and Judaism. So, 
Protestantism is a religion of faith and theology and belief and assent and something you know internal. Uh, Catholicism, Judaism, much more things that you do. It's a community. It's a, it's a way of life. It's much more total, and so it's a lot harder for for Catholic societies to secularize compared to Protestant societies. But still, even in Protestant secular societies, right, where Protestantism is overwhelmingly gone away, people still have a hero system. Right? People still believe they are part of something that transcends them and will outlast them and will go on down through history. For all practical intents and purposes, they're no longer believers in the same way that even their own parents were. And so what happens when you have uh, circumstances in which most people don't really know what to believe anymore, right? Because science has been, at least it was, yeah, so more and more of life is explained by natural causes, by science. Uh, more and more life is you know, rendered efficient by neoliberalism. So life is increasingly robbed of the magical and the enchanted. And yet, we still cling to a hero system. That cannot be taken away because it's a biological necessity to believe that you're part of something that will transcend you and go on. Was so powerful until Dr. Fauci came along. But uh, Dr. Fauci simply articulated the mainstream position in science in the areas he was talking about. Ninety-five percent of the time, at ninety-five percent of the time, he was simply aligned with what, at the time, was the mainstream perspective in science. But what happens is that you're never going to stifle that about the human heart, the human soul. There is always going to be, it's simply within the nature of human beings to, to desire something that transcends themselves. Yeah, it's called a hero system, and everyone has one. And when you throw God out of the equation, uh, the most obvious immediate candidate to replace that, because it means you're going to have that hole there, and it's, you're, you're, you're going to try to fill it with something no matter what. And the immediate candidate to fill it with is politics. Because... Mm. The immediate candidate to fill it is your community. We get our cues from our community. We get our hero system from our community. And uh, there will probably be a political element, but we get our hero system. It's just handed down to us by the world around us. The community around us gives us, gives us meaning. And it tells us what is marriage, you know, is, is military a heterosexual institution. Right? The hero system is usually is something we imbibe without consciously choosing it. But we're usually lucky enough to belong to a community or a nation that we have reason to believe will go on past the end of our lives. And so we connect to that community that goes down in history. And therefore, we are heroic because we are part of a community that does heroic things. Hey, it's the American century yet again. And I'm part of the American century. Australia is the greatest country in the world, mate. I'm part of Australia. Jews, we're God's chosen people. I'm part of the Jews. Because what does politics do? Well, it gives you the opportunity to affect change in the world, to make the world better for, at least according to you, to make the world better for other people, right? So that becomes literally your religion, right? I mean, the same way that people used to have the kind of faith in their God to be able to uh, know that they were living a good life. Now they turn. Yeah, this guy would benefit from reading Ernest Becker, The Fear of Death learn about hero systems. Much more precise way of speaking. Parents of politics, because they think that that is what living the good life is, and that really sort of speaks to all of this, uh, the insanity of the virtue signaling, right? People, I mean, there's honest to God that... There's nothing insane about virtue signaling, but signaling is important. Animals signal, right? Animals signal that they're dangerous. They hop up and down to show how much energy they've got. You know, they, they puff themselves out they display themselves to attract a mate. Right? Signaling is an inherent part of being alive. Animals do it, human beings do it. Why would we not signal that we're virtuous people, that we're not good people? Right? Virtue signaling is virtuous. Virtue signaling is a good thing. It means that you, you know, signal to other people that you're a good, decent bloke. Right? This, this unthought through warmed over caricature of an alt-right perspective is really pathetic. I mean, you'd think this guy would come up with a new idea. 
He's been rambling here for well over an hour with Alex Kashuda and has yet to say anything sharp or smart or new or unexpected. God, there's literally no reason to have a mask in your profile on Twitter because you're not going to catch any, any disease, literally. You're not gonna... uh, we put things on Twitter, on social media, or on display as we go about to signal that who we are, who we affiliate with. Right? We may wear a shirt to show you know, which soccer club we support. You may wear a yarmulke to signal that we're Orthodox Jew and we fear God. Right? You put a mask in your social media profile to signal that you follow public health advice and that you're taking a deadly pandemic seriously and you are not going to trivially pass on a deadly disease and be responsible for the deaths of innocent people. Right? That sounds to me like a virtuous thing to signal about. Right? What kind of person has a problem with someone who is signaling that they take human life seriously and that they are going to take the recommended steps to minimize the transmittal of a deadly disease? You're not going to catch any disease uh, through the interface of your laptop. Right? I mean, that's not going to happen. Yeah, you're signaling something. All right? Animals signal, people signal. Why would people not want to signal that they care about the lives of other people? Uh, it's there because you want to make a statement to signal something, right? To signal, hey, I'm a good person, look what I'm doing. And this guy, he is so shallow, he just takes it for granted that someone who is signaling that uh, they want to be a good person, that they want to be virtuous, that they want to follow public health advice, that that person's a loser and shallow and unthought through, and really the guy making the critique is the shallow one. You know, that used to be the realm of faith, right? The realm of religion. You knew what you were doing. Animals signal, they're not in the realm of religion or faith. Like living things signal, including human beings. Right? It's not something that's limited to religious faith or religion. What we're doing was good because it was between you and God. And now what we have is people doing, making political statements because those political statements are for all practical intents and purposes their religion. It's certainly a deluded and deluded understanding of anything that we would like to see. You know who's deluded here? It's you, the speaker. To think of as sacred or holy, but that's where we're at, right? So what, what kind of person doesn't think that uh, life is sacred and holy? Right? When you put a mask on your social media profile, you are signaling that you take life seriously and that you're following public health advice and that you do not want to easily or carelessly pass on a deadly disease. All right, so if masks are effective against COVID and uh, you know, we're, we're mandated to say so on uh, social media if we're going to opine on the issue, then if that's where the evidence is, then by wearing a mask, you are reducing transmission of a deadly disease and playing your part in being a good